Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Michael Fink, Interim Vice President and Chief Information Officer for UCF. And I want to thank you all for joining us for this virtual open forum on the ERP transformation that UCF is beginning. Today, I'm joined by some of our fellow colleagues that will be introduced in a few moments. And we'd like to share some information with you today that will provide a high level overview of what's changing, why, why now, and how it will impact all of us during the implementation and how it will provide a better operating environment when we are live on the new system. So we're just at the beginning of this journey with many decisions to be made in the coming months that will shape the project and set the stage for success. So I'm joined today by seven of our colleagues as panelists for our forum. And these leaders represent a, a good cross section of the areas of engagement across UCF that will play critical roles throughout the project in helping UCF make key decisions and help govern our process. As you will see, there's only one leader in our group, one IT leader in our group. Uh, this ERP transformation certainly involves a lot of technical changes, but this project is more about taking opportunities to change the way that we do things to improve our effectiveness and achieve better outcomes. If we focus only on the technology, we will not achieve our potential to have the greatest impact. So today joining us is Elizabeth Klonoff, Vice President for Research and Dean of the College of Graduate Studies. Theodora Berry, Vice Provost of Student Learning and Academic Success and Dean of College of Undergraduate Studies. We have Joe Trubach, Interim Chief Financial Officer. Misty Shepard, Interim Vice President and Chief Operating Officer. Maureen Bender, Associate Vice President and Chief HR Officer. We have Dr. Joe Harrington, Pegasus Professor and Chair of our Faculty Senate. Paige Borden, Associate Vice President and Chief Analytics Officer. And again, Mike Sink, Interim Vice President and Chief Information Officer. So to kick us off and provide opening remarks for our time together, I would like to welcome Dr. Joe Harrington, Pegasus, Pegasus Professor and Chair of the UCF Faculty Senate. Joe, thank you for joining us this afternoon. The virtual stage is yours. Thank you, Mike. Uh, welcome again to this ERP transformation open forum. Uh, we appreciate all of you being here to learn about this project. Um, replacing our PeopleSoft ERP system and transforming our business processes is gonna impact all of us in one way or another. Um, these are challenging times. It's almost become a cliche. Um, but it, it makes it really pressing to bring our administrative systems up to modern technology. Um, that's needed so that President Cartwright and his team can do what they call focusing on achieving operational excellence. And that's gonna serve the students, the faculty and the community better. Um, senior faculty and staff may remember life in the pre-PeopleSoft era when we used to use paper for nearly everything. Uh, and since then improvements in technology have changed the way we do things. So instead of long lines going out in the parking lot, Students use my UCF to register. That's a PeopleSoft function. Um, it's become online and not inline. Uh, the, instead of massive three ring binders for promotion and tenure, faculty use electronic promotion and tenure system and to track activities and progress, um, even to do awards. Uh, in the new ERP system, we're gonna get advances over PeopleSoft that are as big as those advances over the previous era. Um, it's also a chance to rethink the processes uh, that we follow to carry out our activities. And that's gonna add efficiencies, enabling us to focus more resources on our academic mission. Um, we may not know the duration of our current challenges or the turns in our circumstances um, that, you know, that are coming toward us, but the new ARP is gonna give us a better means of predicting the implications of potential plans by playing what if scenarios with the budget and other resources. And, and it'll enable that to a much greater degree than we can do today. So the ERP transformation is really an investment in our future. Um, so I'd like to turn it back to Mike uh, for an over, overview of the project. Thanks everyone. Joe, thank you for sharing with us. Um, I'd like to start the presentation portion of our time together, uh, making sure that we have a collective understanding of what ERP is at UCF. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. So ERP or enterprise resource planning is typically a collection of administrative applications that provide 
core business and administrative functionality. So our core system today is PeopleSoft from Oracle, and it consists of these modules that you can see here on the screen, financials, uh, human capital management, which is HR, student records, um, otherwise known as campus solutions, uh, the faculty information system, the MyC MyUCF portal, and various standard uh, and custom reports. Our current ERP was implemented in phases beginning with HR and our student systems, which went live back in the late 90s. And several years later, UCF went live with the financial module. And since that time, we've maintained this system, which requires a considerable amount of people and infrastructure to support. Next slide. So over the years since PeopleSoft was implemented, UCF has undergone, uh, undergone rapid growth and as we've grown, we've reactively added applications and administrative processes that in many cases perform redundant functions, creating a very complex environment of systems and inconsistent processes that make it difficult for UCF to operate efficiently. The fragmentation of systems makes it difficult to share information across the university and use data collected by our disparate systems to make collective data-driven decisions. So our core system today is PeopleSoft, but as you can see here, we have opportunity to simplify the way that we operate by considering the implementation of a common platform and adopting common processes for more effective and efficient operations and replacing a lot of these uh, redundant and duplicative systems. So as part of this project, we're, we're seeking a more holistic approach to this ERP transformation, not just a technology tool replacement. Next slide, please. In the coming weeks, we will select a new ERP system, but regardless of the system, we expect to realize key benefits when we shift to a new platform. A new ERP will not like, likely replace all of our systems and applications. However, it will house all of our core functions like HR recruiting, HR records, payroll, procurement, expenses. Um, adopting one system for our core operations and thoughtfully designing our processes, we will have one source for much of our data creating an environment where we can better trust that data. Additionally, we'll have better access to critical reports that will allow us to bring data into our everyday decision making. This is an opportunity to change the way that we do things. It's not just a technology implementation, as we said before, but it's a catalyst for change. In the implementation, we will design future state processes that may be very different from how we perform functions today, but that follow more effective best practices that have been proven, especially in the higher education industry. Much like the apps on your mobile device uh, that are updated regularly and often without you even knowing it, modern ERP systems are updated frequently by the vendors that we would select. So this means that we'll always have updated technology. Lastly, our new system should be intuitive and easy to understand and use. We will be providing training with any system that we select, but we expect a lower learning curve with a more modern system design with ease of use in mind. Next slide, please. For an institution of our size, there are really only two prominent vendor solutions that we're considering at this point that offer the focus on higher education applications at our scale. Oracle and Workday are the two vendors we will be evaluating over the next couple of months as we decide the platform that best meets our needs. We're not among the first wave of institutions to consider these vendor solutions, but we are certainly among the largest. Both vendors host their applications in the cloud. This reduces the amount of infrastructure development and maintenance required of traditional systems like many of the applications we use, to do, we use today, for example, PeopleSoft. Uh, the upgrades and enhancements are provided by the vendors, and they will be delivered on a more regular basis. Next slide, please. We're structuring the implementation of a new system into two main phases. During the first phase, we'll focus on replacement of our core HR, finance, budgeting, research, and reporting functions. Phase two will focus on migrating our student systems from PeopleSoft to our new platform of choice. And a key reason for holding student to the second phase is the need for both Oracle and Workday to continue to mature some of the student functionality to better meet our needs. In addition to splitting the project into these multiple phases, we'll also reduce the amount of change all at once. 
while the vendors are completing the development of some additional student functionality. We will, as between these two phases, we will integrate the new system to PeopleSoft uh, during phase one to be able to exchange data with our current student system until we move the student application services to the new ERP platform. Next slide, please. So here we provide a high level timeline for our phased approach. We're currently in our software selection phase now, and we're working on evaluation criteria that will help us fairly and transparently select our preferred solution. We're also selecting an implementation partner concurrently as we evaluate the application solution. We are planning to begin to be begin and complete phase one in 24 months with a kickoff this fall and going live with a new system for phase one during the fiscal year 2023. So the exact go live dates will be determined as we select an implementation partner and develop the implementation plan. Um, we will pause at the end of phase one and evaluate the timing and budget needed to continue into phase two for the student system implementation. We have a good idea already what that plan and budget will be, but we will reassess between the phases um, to confirm. During both phases, we will be placing a lot of emphasis on our reporting and analytics capabilities as we seek to improve the use of data across our institutions. So you see at the bottom there, the reporting and analytics spans both of those phases. That will continue to be a focus. Next slide, please. So the project budget has been initially set at 50 million for phase one, but this is based on estimates and not an actual negotiated uh, contract for licenses and implementation costs. So we've not selected a vendor or partner yet, so we expect to be able to refine our budget and look to reduce the cost to implement a new system. Clearly, the more we lower the cost, the better the payback and return on our investment. If we compare it with what we currently spend to license and maintain our current on-premises ERP environment, um, we would realize a payback of about five years. Um, just looking at the hard dollar savings, the payback period is further out and could be up to 12 years. Again, the more we reduce the cost to implement, the better the return. You know, we also recognize too that these are, these are challenging times and spending a lot of money on an ERP system uh, would not seem wise if we don't expect worthwhile outcomes. Uh, in our case, we need to invest in our ability to operate more efficiently. And we'll need to make every effort to reduce the cost of this project and still yield the outcomes needed. And I would also like to add that a good portion of the budget for this project is to actually hire our own people to implement the new solution. So this helps with the learning curve, but it also means that we're investing in our, our people as part of this project. Next slide, please. The ERP implementation or transformation will affect us all in some way, as I mentioned earlier. This is more than a technology change. So next, I'd like to invite our panelists to share some ways in which ERP will enhance the various functional areas as we've identified areas of opportunity during some of our planning activities. Uh, next slide. First, I'd like to invite Theodora Berry, our Vice Provost of Student Learning and Academic Success and Dean of the College of Undergraduate Studies to share some of the positive impacts of our ERP transformation with our student services. Dr. Berry. Thank you, Mike. Um, so I want to really talk about three key things here. And the, and the first of which is the, ne the necessity to transform our students' systems. It is significantly important that our student systems not only become more efficient so that students who are coming in to our, uh, to our university and trying to plan their pathways toward graduation but also those students who are transferring in and need transfer credit evaluations can be better served by the systems that we um, employ as a result of this new ERP system and that we can maintain those systems in an environment that will secure that information in a much more efficient manner. And so we will provide students enhanced and in, in mobile self-service that enables them to plan to succeed using student planner systems and registration systems that speak to each other. We also want to ensure the ability to quickly access information and data so that our, our success-oriented services 
can also speak to each other in a more efficient manner and students know exactly where they stand. And finally, we want to be able to provide automation and workflow that are critical to serving a student population of 70,000 students. And it takes an efficient system to be able to do that from, from the time a student enrolls in their first class um, after orientation to the time that we need to do a degree audit for their graduation. And so what systems are we intending to replace? Our systems right now are older than many of our students on our campus. So we certainly need a more modern system that is app and user friendly. We wanna be able to eliminate spreadsheets and eliminate more paper-based systems and, and move into a system that is more seamless for a population of students who are now digital natives. And what does that mean? It means that we were, are going to implement a system that is intuitive to the student ex experience, that the, regardless of what device they are using, they can access the information they need in a timely and efficient manner. And that way they can spend more time learning and less time searching for information. Many of our students need answers to questions and need to be able to respond in an efficient manner, but they spend a lot of time trying to figure out how things get done. And we want to eliminate that. And finally, we want to increase efficiency so that our students can focus on becoming world-class citizens and by way of providing better service to our students. Thank you, Dr. Barry. So next, I would like to invite our interim CFO, Joe Trubach to share some of the financial enhancements we expect with our transformation. Joe? Thank you, Mike. And I think probably the finance area is gonna be uh, impacted positively the most with a new, new ERP system. Right now, a lot of us, uh, processes we do are manual. Uh, for example, when I came here as a candidate uh, in December I and turned in my expense report, I got a check in March. Uh, it should not take three months to process travel, but the reason it is is because it's all manual. Uh, the, a new ERP system will, will be immensely uh, popular, I imagine, with all the travelers. Um, the other thing that we would do is standardize the way we do business. Uh, and that'll also involve, as, as a part of the ERP system, looking at how we do and examine our processes. Uh, we, we'll, we will be doing process mapping, seeing what steps need to be eliminated, and what areas we can be more efficient in. Another area that I think is really important is getting real-time uh, reports, which right now is not, is not at all possible. Uh, a lot of the things that we have to do on reporting, we have to do by hand or doing multi-step processes. Uh, so that'll, that'll help a lot uh, when we get a new ERP system. And that'll all not only help on the central level, but it also helps at the colleges and division level as well. Um, what systems will this replace? Well, certainly our PeopleSoft financials that has been in place uh, since the 1990s uh, really is an area that uh, this will replace. But in addition to that, We've added on and bolted on many other different types of software packages to help in the financial area. And I think this will be uh, well, well needed, uh, or it is well needed at this point in time. And lastly, what does it mean? Um, it means eliminating over 10 different financial systems, seven HR systems and seven student systems uh, and eight reporting tools and probably hundreds, if not thousands of Excel spreadsheets. Uh, it'll also provide more information at a quick basis uh, for us to react and be able to act, not only react, but be proactive in some of our um, ways that we do business. And finally, it'll allow us to re uh, provide more resources to the academic mission, uh, which is where we should be putting our primary focus as well. So I'll now turn to uh, Dr. I'm sorry, Maureen Bender to talk about the HR uh, advantages for the system. Thank you, Joe. So how will the ERP transformation support human resources? Well, 
HR, as you know, we track and process all employee data throughout the entire life cycle from the time someone is being recruited all the way through until they retire and everything in between. So payroll benefits, all the required reporting that we do on a state, federal and throughout UCF. Um, we have many interfaces into many other systems and right now it is not efficient at all. About a year and a half ago, we implemented, implemented PageUp as our talent management and onboarding system. And while that was a huge improvement for our candidates in terms of a candidate experience, and even for the hiring departments, it was a huge improvement. On the back office side in human resources, it actually made it worse for us it's not any more efficient. In fact, it is more inefficient. So having one system where everything is together and we're not sending data back and forth will make it more efficient on our end and therefore processes will be more efficient and things can happen quicker and easier out in the colleges and divisions. Um, so we will be able to be more efficient our units and departments will be able to access data and actually perform their processes faster as well. So systems that will be replaced, of course, all of the PeopleSoft system will be replaced, PageUp will be replaced. We know that there are several smaller systems that interface now, our background check vendor, for example. We know that several of the vendors we're talking to have relationships with, um, background check vendors that are integrated within the system that we wouldn't have to build interfaces with, again, creating more efficiency. And we would eliminate manual processes, spreadsheets, and just that interface, which we have to upload and download. And that just creates problems when there are issues. And again, creates delays for all of you and a lot of room for manual intervention to be required. Um, we will eliminate 13,000 manual time reporting entries per pay period. And again, we all know that in this day and age, the way we process lappers and is extremely inefficient. Um, we believe that we will be able to review and redesign the faculty activity system, which is a huge deal, and we'll be able to focus more resources to be dedicated to the UCF academic mission which is really why we're all here. I'm now gonna turn it over to Dr. Klonoff. Thanks, Maureen. So uh, I just recently passed my four year anniversary at UCF. And I remember sometime in, in the next week or so, I got my first paper timesheet. And the first time I got a paper timesheet, I thought it was quaint. The second time I got a paper timesheet, I thought it was antiquated. And I realized that some of the systems that involved that were involved in the university really did represent an old fashioned way of thinking about things and operating. This was underscored when we developed, when we uh, went through the process to select the electronic research administration program. Because at that point, it became clear to me that research is actually a microcosm of the university as a whole. Because research sits at the intersection of financials and HR, because we do procure, we buy things, we hire people, we do all of the things that the university does. And as we were moving towards an electronic research administration system, it became clear to us that it became clear to me that passing this off to an to a antiquated system that we have now will not allow us to really reach our potential as a major research university. What I really want to do is give give you just one example of one of the things that we can't do now that most of the other major universities can. Um, as you know, that with COVID, there's a, a lot of questions about what will be funded and what we can be reimbursed for and what our research office can be reimbursed for. And most major universities are able to, to in, their, in their ERP system, identify a way of coding those expenses so they can pull them out separately. And so that way then it's possible in a fairly easy, although not quick, 
but in a fairly relatively easy way to identify the COVID part of a grant expense from the non-COVID part of a grant expense, and then be able to produce it to NIH or NSF or any of those other agencies so that people, so that we could ask for uh, continuation for the, the non-COVID part and maybe reimbursement for the COVID related part. We really can't do that now. Everything we do is based on spreadsheets and the intersection of various spreadsheets. And so what it really means is that our principal investigators are being um, negatively impacted because they cannot get the data that they want or that they need quickly enough. And all of our processes are being negatively impacted. So it became clear as we modernized our electronic research administration system that the university itself upon which the electronic research administration system rests also needs to modernize to a new ERP system. Uh, Mike, I'm going to let you turn it on to the next person. Sure. Thank you, Liz. I'd like to invite Paige Borden, our chief analytics officer, to share how we plan to transform the reporting and analytics capabilities. Paige? Thanks, Mike. One of the things you will have noticed from several of my colleagues on the panel is that there's been many references to reporting, many references to Excel and spreadsheets. Don't get me wrong, I don't think that we immediately replace Excel 100% on this campus. But what would be nice is if we can provide you with the reports that actually give you some information, some insights that actually support those decisions that you need to be making every day on behalf of our students, our faculty, and our staff. And the way in which we deliver reporting right now, especially in the HR and financial segment is very heavy reliant on PeopleSoft tools. So those tools would go away. Those PeopleSoft reports would disappear. The financials data mart in its current style goes away. The data itself is still accessible and will be available to users. It's just gonna be presented in a different format. In theory, we get much more mobile ready. We have a, quite a bit more graphical representations and visual representations of the information rather than a lengthy report of a lot of characters. We should be able to eliminate some of those um, siloed data sources so that HR can more effectively talk to financials and more effectively speak to student. And we can get to some of those complex questions such as the costing for individual courses or individual programs and the variations that we might see to support them for budgeting and for expenditures. And last but not least, we hope to be able to create a one-stop shop for analytics where we have a variety of users across campus who are easily aware of and trained to use the data information that we can provide and know how to best present information for their end users. This is our goal and that's what we're hoping to be able to do. Mike, back to you. Thank you, Paige. Next slide, please. And the next one. I'd like to provide a quick overview of some of the next steps. We've scheduled vendor demos with both Oracle and Workday for the weeks of August 10th and 17th, respectively. Invitations are being sent out. Uh, some have already been sent out, but they're continuing to be sent out. And if you do not receive an invitation and would like to participate, um, Sherry's asked that you contact her and it's sherry.heron at ucf.edu. Um, she's responsible for getting the invitation sent out, so please reach out to her. We're also looking to create meaningful branding around this project. This, it's really a program of projects, such as a project name for our transformation. And we'll be sending out communication soon on the results of a naming campaign that we sent out earlier. Um, we'll also be updating our project website. So this is a good location to find out more information about the project. And it will be updated on a, a regular basis as we make the key decisions, as we move forward in our roadmap, as we select a vendor. Um, there will be a lot more information that will hit the website. And we're also going to be sending more campus communications out now that we're getting closer to actually starting the implementation. Next slide, please. So now, I'd like to uh, spend the remaining time addressing questions that you may have at this point. Uh, again, we still have quite a few decisions to make and we may not have all the answers yet, but we'd like to hear from you. We're privileged to have our student body president, Sabrina LaRosa and Jana Jasinski, vice provost to faculty excellence to help moderate our Q&A sessions. Hello everyone. To everyone listening and watching on Zoom, please note the Q&A feature at the bottom. Please use this Q&A feature to ask questions and we will share them with the panelists. You can also designate who the question is for. 
You'll also know an upvote option. So if you see someone has already asked a question that you are interested in, please upvote it. We'll give, any pref we'll give preference to any of the upvoted questions, followed by questions in order they were asked. There will be some questions that are more straightforward that may be passed over and answered in the Q&A window. You'll find these in the answer tab. We are simulcasting on UCF's YouTube channel. So if any attendees are hearing from colleagues having trouble with Zoom, please direct them there. You can also find the direct YouTube link on, on events.ucf.edu. Thanks, Sabrina. Uh, first question. The transition to PeopleSoft over a decade ago was a nightmare. The transition to this new ERP system will have significant issues and negative impacts to students, faculty, et cetera. Will UCF commit to truly testing all software at the front person level user and fixing all practical issues prior to going live? UCF has a nasty habit of going live with serious bugs. For example, curriculog and Acculog, transcript optical scanning technology and emissions, et cetera. Because higher level UCF decision makers are not, understandably, knowledgeable of how ground level practices, forms, et cetera, operations work, our process and fails to properly ensure that students and staff are not negatively impacted. So I'll, I'll take that first. And I wasn't here when the <laughs> original PeopleSoft implementation occurred. But absolutely, um, a recent project that, that we um, completed was the UCF Rising project was the re and it was around research administration. And we learned some key lessons even recently with that project. But one of the things that um, we did better than maybe previous implementations is make sure that we involve more of the campus community. We have to do that. We have to involve the folks that are gonna use the system. We certainly want to create a more collective approach to the way that we conduct our, our business processes and our operations here at UCF, but we must understand the impact on those that use the system on a daily basis. Um, so absolutely, there will be a lot of involvement. And actually, this, this particular implementation is different than some of the ones in the past. Um, it's even more process intensive because a lot of the application solutions are actually the, the two that we're looking at. A lot of those business processes are already pre-developed based on best practices. And so there will be a lot more what we call conference room pilots that will involve campus engagement to actually test the solution before we turn anything on. And so there's a lot more testing actually as part of this type of implementation than what we've seen in the past. It's not as development heavy because the products for many, for all intents and purposes have been pre-developed. We have the opportunity to configure. We can turn things on and off. We can configure the workflows that we put in place. Um, but there's going to be a heavy focus on testing with this implementation over the next 24 months. Thank you for the question. Would anyone else like to respond to that on the panel? I just might want to say that um, since the electronic research administration system was set up uh, out of our office, I do think we have in place now some groups that have remained to provide advice and consultation moving forward. And so we have the ability now, I think, to quickly get together groups of individuals that represent university-wide departmental administrators and budget people, for example, that can be useful to us moving forward as we begin to set up uh, the new ERP system. So I do think our experience in setting up the electronic research administration system is really germane to how we ought to move forward this way uh, with the new ERP. Great. Mike. Mike, this is Maureen. You might want to talk about the different levels of testing because there's testing by the systems folks and by the subject matter experts. And then there's user acceptance testing. So there's different levels of testing that we will utilize before something is um, ready to go live. And so I think that right. represents another comfort that our users can have that we will, and then there's end-to-end -end testing. So there's different levels of testing that will take place way before we would go live. Right, no, that's a good point. So what Maureen was referring to, as we configure the system, as we do the initial rounds of configuration and looking at what the processes might look like in the system, we'll have the subject matter experts, uh, for example, if we're going to hire a person. There are processes that um, we'll review as we work through the initial configurations. But again, what Maureen was referring to is looking at that from the, the perspective of the person who is maybe in the hiring manager or the person who's going to apply for the job. And that's part of that user acceptance testing where we take those components and we run through those end to end 
to understand what the end user experience is like and to make sure that it works, that we're not making assumptions that it works a particular way. And then when we go to turn it on, it doesn't work at all the way that we intended it to. Um, so the user acceptance testing is a critical gate. And then also that end-to-end -end testing where we look at the, the total workflow of a particular process and, and make sure that we're measuring that it's actually more efficient and more effective than what we had before. Our next question states that, based upon the BOT conversations on cost savings for ERP break-even points within 10 years, due to efficiencies and UCF IT staff reduction and HR staff reductions, how many jobs is UCF estimating will be eliminated to lead these cost savings slash efficiencies? When will those staff members be informed so that they can seek other employment? So the, that's one of the reasons why we, we um, distinguish between hard savings and soft savings. Um, the soft savings are efficiencies that we gain by making our processes more efficient. Um, there are, for example, there are people who currently today are developing uh, in PeopleSoft. They're upgrading, they're making enhancements to the current environment. Well, if we're replacing PeopleSoft, then we don't need PeopleSoft developers at that point. I mean, we've already had some of these conversations internally with uh, our IT staff. But there will be other things that we'll need. There are other capabilities that UCF needs, particularly with uh, reporting and analytics. So there are opportunities for, there will be opportunities for people to move into different job roles. And so when we talk about soft savings, we're talking about, again, efficiencies in process, not necessarily eliminating a lot of people. There may be some opportunities where a person decides to retire and we may not replace that person because we're putting less emphasis on that process and we're gonna do more automation and self-service. But I don't think we look at this as uh, a huge opportunity for us to start laying off people. That's not what we're saying. We are looking at opportunities to create operational efficiencies and effectiveness and where we need to provide better in-person support instead of having people do a lot of manual paper-based processes, there will always be exceptions where we need the human touch. And so that's where we'll have, we'll be able to provide more staff in those areas um, where we've fallen short today, frankly. Any other comments from the panelists? Well, and I just want to say from the reporting perspective, I think that we've always been a little bit behind on capacity for who has that skill set. So anybody who's interested in, you know, upskilling into the reporting development area, we'd be happy to see if we can accommodate your interest in that activity. So we're looking forward to being able to enhance and provide greater number of reports that are more valuable to the end users. And we're gonna need people who can do that for us and help us with that. Right. And I, I, I did mention as well, there is a distinguishing uh, definition between hard savings and soft savings. There is a hard savings here as well. When we move this platform to the cloud and we replace other applications that are duplicative and redundant, there is a savings there that we will recognize as part of the project. Now that, that ROI is further out. Um, and that's why, again, we're distinguishing between operational efficiencies that will make us better from a soft savings perspective, but there are real hard savings that we expect to gain as well from the project. The next question states, I am concerned about the $50 million in funding for this project. From what I understand, carry forward funds have been taken from colleges and departments at UCF and put towards this project. These funds are often used for hiring adjuncts and paying visiting instructors, as well as other important projects. The last numbers I saw was a loss of all carry forward money, plus a 3% budget cut with another 3% cut possible in the future. For most departments, this amounts to hundreds of thousands of dollars. Given that the end of life for PeopleSoft, according to Oracle, is not until 2030, I do not understand the rush to do this right now, especially with the budget uncertainty related to COVID-19. So I'll, I'll start addressing that one. Uh, the carry forward funds for, were from this past year's carry forward. Previous year's carry forward funds uh, will remain with the, uh, the units and the divisions. Um, and we're still looking at that. Uh, the 3% that we're also looking at are, is a 3% reallocation that everybody will put into a strategic initiative uh, fund. 
uh, and that is still in the process of being formulated. Uh, and so that's still not the, at its point of uh, being mature. Um, but looking certainly at what we get out of this, I mean, trying to get reports to, to everyone, uh, in, but in this case, particularly the, uh, the Board of Trustees, uh, they've been frustrating, we've been frustrated at the lack of ability to produce reports, produce information, especially produce information that we are able to use to make decisions on. Uh, so I really think this is well past due, probably 10 years past due. Uh, I was amazed when I came here at some of the ways that we do business that have been changed for the rest of the country years ago. Um, so it really isn't a good option to wait until 2030. Uh, as I said, uh, some of these things should have been done years ago. And I think uh, being able to do this within the next two years, you'll see an immediate and a, an immense difference on how we operate. I'd also like to add that um, I think with all of us realizing the aspirations and that UCF has high aspirations, that our current platform is an obstacle to reaching a lot of those aspirations. Um, the challenges, I, I haven't heard from anyone who says they really enjoy filling out paper timesheets. I haven't heard anyone say they wish the hiring process took longer. Um, there are a lot, of, a lot of things that we all feel and are frustrated with in the new system. And I kind of look at it as a car that you reach a point where the dollars that you continue to invest in that aging vehicle are no longer uh, a good investment. And that's where we are with PeopleSoft right now. It's not that we wouldn't have any other costs associated with keeping people soft. And we realize that there are modules that if we were to stick with people soft, we would have to, to implement and there are costs associated with that. So it's not necessarily a question of whether or not uh, this is the time to spend money on a new ERP system. The question was more about do we, invest money into our existing ERP system, or do we invest money into a new one that will encompass a lot of the disparate pieces that we currently experience frustration with? And the current PeopleSoft system can't do some of the things, no matter if we spent more money on it or not, the mo we can't do some mobile things. Well, the world is already mobile and has been for a long time. We can't PeopleSoft's module for talent management doesn't have the mobile capability, which is in a way that's efficient. So that's why we implemented PageUp. It was a short-term solution to be able to get some better usability for candidates and applicants and for our internal stakeholders um, because we were already behind the times with people admin and the PeopleSoft solution wasn't something that was readily usable. I'll put it that way. So again, if we kept putting Band-Aids and duct tape on the PeopleSoft system, at some point, the glue, the adhesive on the Band-Aids and the duct tape was gonna get pretty bad. So this is a time where we really had to assess the big picture. Yeah, and I would add too, it's again, we're not just talking about PeopleSoft. There are multiple systems that are redundant across campus and makes it very difficult for us to share and exchange data. And we're maintaining all of those systems. We're maintaining the servers. We're maintaining the applications. We're upgrading all those systems. And they're just not effective. So rather than us continuing to invest, yes, this is an expensive project. I get it. Believe me, standing before the BOT, and having to present a huge number like that was an uncomfortable situation, I'll just be honest, especially in the environment that we're in. And, you know, we don't want to come across as tone deaf, but we also recognize too that when we emerge from this, and I believe we will, and the president has made this clear, we want to continue to invest and make investments in our future. 
um, and not just wait for things to pass like maybe some institutions are doing. Uh, we want to take the opportunity now. And, and the fact is, is that, you know, we've lost some funding because of the, the large carry forward balances that we've carried. So we want to make those investments uh, while we think we should right now, um, you know, and, and not lose more money as a result of, you know, some of those carry forward balances being swept. So thank you for the question. Our next question is, will the new ERP support customized workflows? Yes. So the, the workflow capability is configurable. So we can, we can modify workflows. It's just, we don't have the ability to build uh, entire applications like we have, because there's another question that I see that's come up about uh, some modules that we have built uh, from scratch, like the faculty, uh, promotion and tenure system that we built in PeopleSoft, uh, Pegasus Path. There are other things that we built in PeopleSoft. Um, we don't have the capability today to do that in the new platforms, meaning we can't just build custom applications, but the, the workflow um, is, is customizable and we have the ability to configure the system. So there's, that may not make a whole lot of sense and some of it will depend on the platform that we choose as well. But for the, for the most part, these these systems are built around best practices. Um, and again, we're not the, the first institution to be doing this. So there are others that have gone before us, particularly in HR and finance. Uh, and so we'll, we'll definitely follow their lead, but it is, it is configurable. Liz, I think you want to make a comment. And if I could just add that um, some of these systems that we hold on to so dearly, like the P&T system, if you've been anyplace else, you'll know that it's an incredibly clunky hard to manage system and that almost that that virtual that a huge proportion of other universities have systems that are much easier to use and that facilitate the review of, of people's PT. And again, because we were locked into this people saw system with some inherent problems in it, it really made it impossible for us to even modernize something like the clunky, clunky PT application. All right. So, um, Jan, if I may, I'll just go ahead and maybe follow on to get that question. So we've, we've already talked about it, but um, so the question was, do we have a plan for these systems? And that's that's part of what we're developing now is a plan for those systems. And there are options. Look, we can we can port what we currently have in HR and finance and kick the can down the road and move that over to um, our campus solutions environment. But I don't necessarily think that's the right approach. Um, as Dr. Klonoff stated, you know, it's a clunky system. Um, we continue to have to maintain it. We continue to get requests uh, to enhance that platform. Rather than continuing to invest in that and, and spend development time, let's look for an alternative that better meets our needs. There are functional gaps in that product now. And, and so we know there are better tools out there. So we're taking the opportunity now to look for those tools. Thanks for that. Uh, next question states, in moving from an in-house UCF IT support system to a third-party cloud IT support system, how do we ensure that a third party has the same level of care and speed? That's a great question. I'll take that one first, if it's okay with the panelists. Um, so part of this is understanding what the service levels are. Um, when we sign a contract with either Oracle or Workday, part of the negotiation is going to be to understand that service level that they will adhere to. Um, and so we want to make sure that if, if the system goes down, what, how, what, what is their response time? Um, what is their uptime currently with other customers? Those are things that we're going to evaluate um, as part of the vendor, the vendor selection process. Um, another thing that was not specifically mentioned here is security. There's concern about putting our data out into the cloud. So we need to make sure that we assess their security posture and their policies and standards to make sure that our data is going to be secure. Um, so that's absolutely part of uh, the vendor selection process is to understand what their service levels are and to ensure that they have things like business continuity and disaster recovery processes in place. So that if they do have a failure, what happens? Will they fail over? How long will it take to fail over? How long will it take for them to bring us back up if, if we go down? Um, many of the cloud providers have a lot more redundantly, redundancy than we can afford, I can tell you that. So um, they have a lot more resources at their disposal 
and it's more of an automated failover, we wouldn't even see the impact of a server failure. Whereas within our systems, it, it, we have to spend a lot of money to build that redundancy in our infrastructure. So a lot of the vendors have already thought about that, and, but we wanna make sure that we understand what that service level is. And for our last question, can you share some other large universities that use each of these systems? Yes, yeah, so there are, there's quite a few uh, actually that have gone with, particularly in the HR and finance area um, with Oracle and, and Workday, but now I have to be careful. I don't say any names that haven't quite gone uh, to fruition yet, but um, Ohio State University is one of the, is one of the largest institutions that will actually go live um, fairly soon with their HR and finance implementation. Um, within the state of Florida, uh, Florida Atlantic and Florida Gulf Coast, they're not as large as we are, but they went live with uh, HR and finance. Actually, Florida Gulf Coast went live with their HR and finance implementation uh, earlier this month. I think it was July 6th was their go live date. Boise State, um, is another one that has gone live. Um, UCLA, um, University of California, San Diego, uh, they just went live. Uh, so there are a lot of institutions out there. Um, and part of the vendor selection process will involve UCF interviewing some of those current customers and customers that have recently gone live. Because some of the customers that went live early, they were early adopters, their experience was probably very different than what ours is going to be because you know things may not have been quite um, up to par for what we need. Um, but we will have a good solid round of interviews with other uh, reference customers to make sure that um, we understand what we're getting into. Any other comments from the panelists? Okay, well, I would like to thank our panelists and Dr. Harrington for their participation in today's forum. And I would like to also thank all of our attendees for joining today and for, for your questions. Again, to stay informed, please visit the website. We'll be providing additional communications uh, both on the website and through other channels as we progress through the project. Thank you and I hope everyone has a great afternoon. Mike, did you wanna talk about the naming contest? We, 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 I talked about, I mentioned it briefly before, so we'll be sending out a communication um, on that soon. We wanted to have this open forum first and have an opportunity to talk more about the project. And then uh, again, we want to name the project and brand it to make it something that's a little more fun that resonates, uh, something that's a little more um, resonant than ERP. Right. So. Thanks everyone.